All right, I'm trying to lose my voice today, so you'll have to bear with me. Hopefully, it'll hang on till the end of this video. The objective for this lesson is that you'll be able to solve problems involving discounts. We're also going to take this up a notch at the end, and we're going to combine discount problems and tax problems together. So these notes are from Chapter 6.3, Part D in your textbook. And just like in the last lesson, we started off with a question about taxes, tips, and markups and what they did to your final price. In this lesson, it's about what do discounts do to your final price. And hopefully you're saying that they decrease it. Discounts are a good thing. They decrease your final price. So, yesterday, everything we did was added on to our final price. So we did tips, markups, and taxes. And we did 100% plus those things. Today, we're doing discounts. So we're going to take 100% of the original price minus the discount percent. So if we look at this first example, a DVD that is normally $22 is on sale for 25% off. What is the sale price? So 25% of the price we don't have to pay. That's the discount. So what is the percent remaining that we do have to pay? Well, just like yesterday, if we take 100% minus the 25% discount, you'll see that what's left is 75%. So we only have to pay 75% of the original price because the store discounted it 25%. So we're going to set up our proportion just like in our last lesson, 75%. The percent always goes over 100. The $22 goes on the bottom, our original price. I didn't explicitly say it in the last lesson, but this bottom value here is always your original price. It's always the original price. And so now to find our answer, cross, multiply, and divide. So I'm going to do this on my calculator along with you. So we're going to do 22 times 75 divided by 100. And my calculator says $16.50. So actually my calculator said 16.5. Since this is money, I just add the other zero on at the end to make it 16.50. If you wanted to think of this question in terms of our is over of equals percent over 100, the question that you're being asked is what is 75% of $22? That's what we have to pay is 75% of this. So we're figuring out what 75% of $22 is. Again, it is over of, so the of part goes on the bottom. Here's two more examples. A $42 shirt is 15% off. So 15% of the price we do not have to pay. So what's remaining that we do have to pay? Hopefully you're saying 85%. There you go. You get to be on my video now. Yeah, I'm making a video of my notes, so you'll be forever preserved. The janitor just came in to take my trash, so that's the disturbance. <laughs> No, it's fine. See, you added some entertainment to my video now. <laughs> All right, have a good night. So we have to pay 85% of the cost of the shirt. So 85% over 100. So 85% of $42. So again, I'm going to punch at my calculator just like you. 42 times 85 divided by 100. And I got 35.7. And I add a zero on there because it's money. That was a terrible box. 
All right, the last example. I, ho I hope you're seeing that all of these examples are set up the exact same way. All of these you're taking 100% minus the discount. And that's telling me what percent of the price I have to pay. The 35% tells me what percent I don't have to pay. The 65% tells me what percent I do have to pay. So we set up our proportion. 65% over 100. $69 goes on the bottom. I cross multiply and divide. And again, I'm going to punch it in my calculator along with you. And I got 44.85. All right, so that's discount. So now we're going to kick this up a notch and we're going to combine discount and tax together. So to do that, we've got to do it in two steps. And the tax is always the last step. I'll explain that. Let's look at this question. Lindsay bought a $25.95 shirt at Forever 21 on sale for 25% off. The sales tax was 7.5%. What was the total cost of the shirt? So do we want to pay tax? Do we want to pay the 7.5% on the original price? Or do we want to pay tax on the sale price? Hopefully you're saying the sales price. That's why we have to do the discount first to find out what the discounted price is. And then we're going to take the tax. So we're not going to do the tax on this. We're going to do the tax on the discounted price. So we're going to break this up into two parts. The first part is finding the discount, which is what we just got done doing, the last three examples. And the last piece is finding the tax, which we did in our last lesson. So the discount, 25% off. So 25% is what I don't have to pay. What's remaining that I do have to pay, hopefully you're saying 75%. So we set up our proportion again. I want to know what is 75% of the original price because that's what I have to pay. So we're going to cross multiply and divide. So 25.95 times 75 divided by 100 equals, I got 19.4625. Let me write that down, 19.4625. But this is money, so I'm going to round this to nineteen dollars and forty six cents you want to round it to the nearest cent so the number before that is a two that's smaller than five so it stays six so this is the actual price of the item after i take the discount that's what i got to pay tax on so we're going to pay tax on this 1946 so my tax Again, tax gets added to your cost. Tax is an additional, so I got to pay 100% of the 1946 plus 7.5% tax. So in essence, I'm really going to pay 107.5%. Again, this is what we did in the last lesson. So I set up my proportion again. I'm paying 107.5% of the 1946 so make sure you use this amount 1946 not the 2595 so I want to know what is 107.5% of 1946 so I take the 1946 times 107.5 divided by 100 and I get $20 Oh, here, let me write down what I got in my calculator. 20 point, that's a 9, 1, 9, 5. I'm rounding it to the nearest cent. The number before that is a 9, so that means I need to round this to a 2. So my final answer is $20.92.
<coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I told you. <coughs> my goodness. I told you I'm trying to lose my voice. Somebody asked me today in class, why is it important to know how to do this? And my answer was that a lot of times the stores do not properly take your discount. So if you walk up to the register knowing what you should be paying, then you're going to know if they do it right or not. I can tell you this happens all the time. My wife is very good about knowing what the price should be. She might not know exactly, but she has an idea of what it should be. And she watches when they're ringing it up, and if it doesn't come up right, then she can tell them they didn't take the discount properly. If you don't know how to do that, then you've just lost out on that savings. Here's another example. In November, a holiday display at Lowe's was $135. In December, the display was marked down 35%. In January, it was marked down an additional 40%. What was the cost in January? So you might think that you can just add these percents together and take 75% off of the original price. The problem is that in January, when you take your discount in January of 40%, you're not taking 40% off of the 135. You're taking 40% off of the new price in December after the 35% discount. So you can't add these together. So we need to figure out what our December price is going to be. And then we're going to take 40% off of that to find out what our January price is. So you have to do this in two parts. So in December, we have a 35% discount. So we 35% is what we don't have to pay. So subtract that from 100. And that tells us that we have to pay 65% of the original price. So we set up our proportion, 65 over 100. Our original price goes down in the bottom, $135. Cross multiply and divide. So 135 times 65 divided by 100. And I get 87.75. Whoops, 75. So now this is what I'm going to discount 40% in January. I'm not going to take the 40% discount off of the 135. I'm going to take it off of the 87.75. That's why we had to do the December one first to find out what our discounted price was in December so that now I can take another 40% off of that. So in January, we're going to take 40% off. So 100% minus 40% means that what I have to pay is 60%. So I set up my proportion again. 60% off. I want to know, or not 60% off, sorry. 40% off. I have to pay 60% of the 87.75. So again, I'm using 87.75 here, not the 135 I used in December. I cross multiply and divide. So 87.75 times 60 divided by 100, and I get 52.65. So in January, the price is all the way down to 52.65 from 135. Now, if you want to try something, try taking. 75% off of 135 and see if you come up with 5265. You should find that you don't. It's not the same thing. Because the January discount doesn't come off the 135. It comes off of the 8775. Alright, one last example. Noah bought a tent at Sports Authority on sale for $158.10. This price represented a 38% discount. What was the original price? So this problem is backwards from what we've been doing. They gave us the discounted price. They want us to find what the original price was. So how much was it before you took 38% off? We're going to start out the same way. If 
they took 30% off of the original price. That means what you actually paid was 62% the original cost. So we set up our proportion again. If you remember, I said that on the bottom, down here is always our original cost. Well, in this case, that's what we're trying to find is the original price. So the 158.10 goes on top. So like I said, this one's backwards from what we've been doing. So we're going to cross multiply and divide to find out what the original price was. So 158.1 times 62, nope, times 100, sorry. 158.1 times 100 divided by 62 equals $255. So the original price was $255. After you take a 38% discount, it becomes 158.10. All right, so that concludes this lesson. If you uh, were confused by any of this, just go back to the part you were confused on and watch it again. Mr. B is out, maybe. Yes, I'm out.